Christina here. Welcome to day 21 of the holiday card series for 2019. Um, I apologize for getting this one up a little bit late. I got home from being out of town. I was actually on a cruise to celebrate a friend's 40th birthday and just got back and I quickly filmed a video and I didn't have time to do this intro until just now. So I'm glad to sit down with you guys and say hello and tell you about today's card. Today's card has some fun snowflake stamping on it, but also with some distressed oxide resist and ink blending. So um, I experimented with this card quite a bit. I actually made it three times and then the first time I made it was the best version. So that's the one you're going to be seeing today. So let's get into it. The snowflakes I'm using today are from Stampendous. This is their intricate snowflake stamp set, and it actually comes with some stencils as well that coordinate with these large snowflake images. I'm not going to be using the stencils today, so I'll set those aside, but I did want to let you know that they come with the stamp set. I'm now going to do a bunch of ink blending. I'm going to be using, at first, just three colors of Distress Oxide ink. I've got Picked Raspberry, Blueprint Sketch, and Wilted Violet. I also have a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and I'm going to be blending these inks using some blender brushes from Honeybee. I'm gonna start out with this picked raspberry color and I want it to be fairly saturated in one corner. And as I add the colors for this under layer, I wanna make sure I have a bright enough colors but not completely fully saturated. And that's because I'm going to be stamping the snowflakes, putting clear embossing powder on top, and then adding more ink over that layer, and then buffing off the ink off the, off the embossed areas. So I need a little bit of contrast between uh, the first layer of ink blending and the second layer. I've added some wilted violet, and now I'm coming in with blueprint sketch. I just want a little bit of a softer fade up in that other top corner. So like I said, I am going to be heat embossing and because I'm going to be heat embossing, I wanna make sure that this background is completely dry. Distress Oxide inks, um, they're kind of a hybrid ink between dye and pigment and they take a little bit of time to dry or not a little bit, more than usual, more than you think. And so I wanna make sure that I hit this with my heat tool to speed up the drying process and test it out with some embossing powder multiple times to make sure that that embossing powder doesn't stick to the background. So I tested it once and it wasn't quite ready, so I dried it some more. And then I realized I had a scratch on my paper. I think it was from the tweezers when I was holding it, um, but I'm just gonna work around that. So I applied some anti-static powder tool and tested it once again, and it looks like the powder slides off just fine now. So I'm gonna move on to the stamping. The first stamping I'm doing is the greeting. And eventually on the final card, you'll notice that I actually cover this up, but I did wanna leave this in the video so you know exactly how I did this. I stamped the greeting in Versamark ink, and then I sprinkled on some Brutus Monroe Alabaster white embossing powder. That coats the stamped area only, and then I can heat it up with a heat tool until that embossing powder melts. So now I'm going to be stamping the snowflakes, also in Versamark ink, and I'm going to do these sort of in stages because once you stamp it, it is a clear ink and you can't really see where it is, so you want to make sure you apply some embossing powder um, or even heat set it too, so that you can see where that stamping is and you don't over stamp things or double up on some areas. So now I'm using some icicle embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This is a clear embossing powder. And after I had the powder on there, then I stamped the other two snowflakes in the stamp set. And after each one, I did apply that embossing powder just so I knew exactly where I had stamped. So I continued on stamping all of these snowflakes and I'm gonna keep doing that until I have quite a few and then I'll use my heat tool to melt the embossing powder. This one is very easy to see once it's melted because it goes from kind of a ghostly white powder to completely clear and shiny. So it's really easy to see when it's completely melted. I finished off by stamping in the top corner and filling in some gaps and now I'm ready to do some ink blending over the top. 
So I'm going to try uh, take some oxide ink. This is wilted violet, and I'm going to kind of kind of go over the areas that didn't have purple before because I want the color underneath to show through the clear embossing powder. It's not going to look like much right now because I haven't buffed it off the embossed areas, but I did want to show you exactly how I applied it to all these different areas. I swapped up the ink colors a few times. I added quite a bit of blue near the bottom. And at one point I decided it was too much blue, so you'll see what I do that here and what I do with that here in a minute. Added some more pink down in the corners, turned it a little bit more of a purple shade. And I'm going to take a clean paper towel and I'm going to buff off the ink that's on that embossing powder. So notice how it just brightens it all up and it gets rid of that embossing powder or that ink that's sitting on top of the embossed areas. It also cleans off that greeting so it's more wiped. I love how it's a subtle background. It's not super screaming in your face that these are snowflakes, but it's also really beautiful. At this point, I decided I need a little more contrast near the bottom, so I grabbed chipped sapphire. I had quite a bit of blue in that bottom corner, and so I wanted to just give it a little bit of a different shade, and this chipped sapphire is going to intensify the area around the snowflakes on the bottom. And when I buff off uh, the ink off the top of that embossed area, then you can really see the snowflakes. I then decided to grab some Peacock Feathers ink, and this actually didn't show up too much in the end, so you probably could skip this step, but um, I wanted to add a little more of a different color shift over on the one side. And it was just enough of a color shift that when I buffed off the ink, it uh, made that snowflake stand out just a tiny bit more. Inked up a little more purple um, in this top corner. I was loving that bright pink coming through underneath the clear snowflake. And I thought adding a little more purple would help it stand out even more. You'll notice here when I buff it off that it really makes that uh, picked raspberry pop. Okay, so now I have all of my ink blending done. Decided to take an, a distress sprayer and spray some water in the palm of my hand and flick the water on top. This is going to give it even more of a kind of snow flurry look. Gives it a little bit more of a wet feel. Okay, so I let this dry. And like I mentioned in the intro, I made this card three times. So I did two other backgrounds in the meantime and then decided that this first attempt looked the best. So I grabbed my A2 layers dies for Muffle Flower and I used one of the smaller ones. I think it's just the next size in from A2 and cut this out. I also did this because I wanted to straighten up that greeting. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was going to use the use some uh, a separate stamped greeting. Then I decided I really did want that greeting to stand out more, so I stamped and embossed it on some black cardstock. This is a Licorice Twist cardstock from Basil. So I put that on with a piece of foam tape, and then I prepped my card base. This is the same white cardstock I used for the background, but this is the 110 pound version. Scored that at five and a half to create a top folding card, and then adhered my background directly onto the card base. For a little more sparkle, I decided I would take these um, little embellishments. In fact, I'm not even sure where they're from. They were in just a Ziploc bag in my sequin stash. I'm not entirely sure where I got these. I think I got them at an event somewhere and they were in a big, huge jar and I grabbed a handful and put them, put them in a Ziploc bag because they said I could. I don't recall where they're from. They might be Studio Katya. I'm not entirely sure. I'm adhering these with some Connect Glue from Gina K Designs. And then I grabbed a white gel pen and added just some little dots to um, make this glisten even more. I also drew on some little crisscross sparkles so that it looks like it's gleaming and sparkling. Added some more dots there, and that finishes the card. So you'll notice there's glue underneath those embellishments, but it does dry clear. Thanks so much for tuning in for today's video. I'm so glad you stopped by. I love how those snowflakes turned out. They're subtle and yet you can still see them. I think it turned out really beautifully with all of that resist. I've got three more videos for you guys to check out. I'm gonna put them on screen right now and you can click over and watch these. These are going to be the 2018, 2017, and 2016 
uh, videos for day 21 of the holiday card series. And if you want to see even more from the holiday card series, I'll have links down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.